Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. Become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. It's Wednesday morning here on KSJE, and joining me in our visual radio studio to talk a little bit about the Farmington Municipal Schools is Superintendent Dr. Eugene Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt, welcome back to KSJE. Good morning, Scott. Good to have you here. Also joining us here in our studio is Robin Hoffman, one of the members of the Farmington School Board. And Robin Hoffman, good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Glad Th to be here. Thank you for coming in, all of you, and it's great to have you here. And uh, Dr. Schmidt, we have a number of things on the uh, topic to talk about this morning, correct? And so... Uh, Let's, I guess we should get started, right? Yes, and thank you for letting us sneak in in the midst of our school board retreat that we'll be talking about today. But yes. we have some very specific things we'd like to share with the listeners. And among those are the events that uh, will be taking place over this Wednesday and Thursday for our school board retreat that we do as an annual event to really strategize for the upcoming year. But other things we'd like to just share with the community we always are interested in enrollments when you talk about schools and we'd like to give an update as to how we're doing on that. We'd also like to just take a little reflect or recap on last year and the academic progress that our kids are making across the district. There are several items of importance that we'd like to kick in, specifically a memorandum of understanding with the city of Farmington for school resource officers. Okay, um, right. School safety is always an important thing, and we are very proud to have the city of Farmington as partners in the safety of our kids. I'd like to, again, give uh, Chief Hebby and the police department a shout-out as we talk about school resource officers. We had an exciting summer for Apache and Esperanza Elementary in their K-5+, plus, and so I'm anxious to share with the community that 150 of our kids had the benefit of 25 of days of extended learning. And then finally, I, I want to talk about a ribbon cutting. We want to talk about uh, coffee at the new central office. And as we always do, celebrate your celebrity status as a historical figure in the town of Farmington. I didn't see that on your list <laughs> but until just now, so okay. Um, but uh, I'm right there along with yourself, Dr. Schmidt, so um, it's, it's nothing about me. It's more about the community. But thank you yes. for adding that to our talking points this morning. I appreciate it very much. And I'm looking forward to that event that's coming up soon, the Dining with the Dead event. And so... But let's get started by talking a little bit about um, this uh, retreat that you have going on um, today and tomorrow, right, for the school board. And, um, and that is all about um, kind of reinvigorating and getting them ready to go for the new school year, Robin Hoffman? Well, it is actually a um, strategic planning retreat ah, okay. um, that we do um, annually, um, lining out um, our vision, um, things that we want to be focusing on for um, the upcoming school year. So um, we've got full days, and it includes then district leadership as well as the members of the board. Right. And the strategic planning, of course, I think anyone who's in any organization has heard that term before and knows how important it is to kind of know kind of where you're going and, and how we're going to get there and, and have some kind of conversation about if those plans and goals are are good, are then the right thing to be doing at this time, and those types of things, right, Dr. Schmidt? Yes, in fact, I'm very proud of the school board because since 2015, they've been very strategic in their planning, trying to set three to five year goals looking into the future to make sure that our work aligns with the thoughts of state and federal government as well as the wishes of our community. So we have some very specific things that we'll be looking at, and the first of which is the review of our five academic goals or pillars of success right and you can see them for those who are listening and not on the visual listener we do have an academic achievement for all we have a culture that we want to recruit and retain the best quality staff as we can we want to engage the community certainly and I want to focus on this one, build that culture of respect and align resources because in our conversation over today and tomorrow we really want to be looking at specifically how do we continue to grow the academic achievement of all kids and how do we build on a culture of respect 
I'm probably for community purposes this year, Scott, we're going to call it safe, orderly, and collaborative environments. And so there's going to be a long look at the uh, safety of kids, and the safety of kids, if we can do that, gives them an opportunity to focus on their learning. So that will be one of the long conversations we have. I see. Okay. And, and we can see it's a two-day event. And so, again, uh, this is something that the board is going to be a part of as, as well to kind of, again, explain to Dr. Schmidt, I guess, your thoughts about this whole process, correct? Well, and, and working with the district office staff of really looking at what they're currently doing, understanding what they're doing, and uh, because they are the professionals, they are the experts. Um, so but we, they work for you. Well, they they work for Dr. Schmidt, right. and Dr. Schmidt works for, Dr. for the Schmidt school board. Dr. Schmidt works for the school board. You're right. Right, exactly. So, um, when the uh, district has taken off on um, on the high reliability schools, this journey then started about ten years ago, and so kind of catching up the board, and also the board then lining out um, their vision. Um, and working towards what should the board be talking to our legislators about, um, what are things that are important for our schools, and so <coughs> guiding us in our conversations with our legislators as well. Kind of having a uniform front, I suppose, if it, all of you are having conversations right. with uh, Santa Fe or what have you? Right, exactly, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. And, and Dr. Schmidt, this is important again because we know when the legislature meets, they don't have a lot of time necessarily to always hear from, from everyone. And so it's important to get that message when you have the opportunity to, to strike quick and, and well. Yes, yeah, so let me offer two thoughts. And for those who don't have access to the video that we're showing in terms of the high reliability. Right. And I'll let them know they can watch it later. Yes. Is another option, everybody. If you uh, are listening on the radio this morning and want to watch the video at a later date, you can always go to our Facebook page or YouTube channel to see it. But go ahead. Yes, but one of our focuses will be on we have schools all across the district, and we want to have the assurance to our community that whether you live in any part of town, there's a high reliability that your school will have a high quality education, provide equity and access to all kids, provide uh, really enriching and quality kinds of programs. So we'll talk a lot about high reliability and nestled underneath that are those two goals of uh, improving our academic achievement as well as ensuring the safety of our kids across the district. And so that, as you had mentioned earlier, there's a connection back to the state legislature, and perhaps Board Member Hoffman can share a couple of thoughts on, we will be having a conversation today and tomorrow about what are the kinds of asks that we'll be taking to the state legislature. Are there things that the state can do, I guess, to help make every school a high reliability school in a district like Farmington? Absolutely, absolutely, because um, uh, teacher pay is usually in statute, right? right? And so um, last year we were promoting um, first to 40, 40,000 for our beginning teachers. And we and you got it. And we got it. Right. Yes, yes. we did. It was fantastic. But the compensation does need to be higher. And so how do we then um, have the funding that's necessary for increasing compensation for our teachers? And when I say teachers, I mean our staff, educational, um, EAs, custodians, everyone that, that works in education should have um, equitable compensation. Sure. And so that's part of what you're talking about that you will take to the legislature. Right. Exactly. Um, and then how important that is. Um, it is one um, aspect that is directly tied to student outcomes is teacher salaries. Sure. That makes that makes sense. And so that's one thing. Um, I did want to ask a bit something that caught my eye on the calendar on the schedule for your second day, this Harvard Business Review and uh, the culture about that. Dr. Schmidt, can you give us some insights on what that's all about? Yes. As we go through today and tomorrow, in fact, uh, Board Member Hoffman will actually be leading a conversational study on surpassing Shanghai. Um, I'm, I brought a book, if you can... Oh, okay. I can show the picture to the viewers because this is a must read. Right. And Let me get uh, you back up there in a minute. Okay. Oh, right. Let's go. Okay. So hit the right button. Lots of there homework, it is. For, lots of okay. homework for the community right. surpassing okay. Shanghai. Right. In this book by Mark Tucker, we're trying to understand what are the lessons that we can learn from some of the best educational countries in the world. There's uh, articles in this book about Finland, Shanghai, 
Um, Singapore, Finland is mentioned, Ontario, Canada, amongst other places, state of Maryland that we're trying to understand. So what, what, is, what is going on in the world educationally from places or countries whose academic achievement that is higher than ours. And so Robin I is see. going to lead a book study on that. Okay, interesting. Robin Hoffman, again, this is something that uh, you can share with your fellow board members. Right. Um, they, we have all copies of this, but looking at um, this study, uh, there are seven things that all of these different cultures have done to increase their education um, systems. And so if there's seven things across these cultures that are very different, we feel like there's something that we can learn from those that, will, that we can bring back to Farmington and incorporate into maybe what we're already doing or what we're looking to do. Interesting. All right. My guest this morning, Robin Hoffman is here. She is a Farmington School Board member, and Dr. Eugene Schmidt is here, the Superintendent of Schools for Farmington, talking about their upcoming retreat, which is happening today and tomorrow. It's something you do every every year, isn't it? Everyone. So makes a lot of sense. Um, before we move on, is there anything else about the retreat we wanted to mention, Dr. Schmidt? Yes, we want to talk about the Harvard Business Review. And again, if you can flip to okay. the camera. There he is. I want to talk about the importance of this study as we go through. This will be led by board member ha or Galloway and uh, our board president, Rhodes. We're trying to understand and from this Harvard Review the importance of strategy and culture and obviously strategic planning, so strategy is involved in what are the things that we think we can do as action steps to improve, but within that is the importance of building on the culture. We had talked about the importance of having a culture of safe and orderly schools. We talk about the importance of having a culture of academic achievement that embraces all students, all kinds of learning. So we're going to look at the Harvard Business Review this day and tomorrow for the purposes of how can we build on the cultures that we have to make them more deeply embedded? And so as perhaps teachers, school leaders change, it is that embedded culture that carries the district forward. So going to be a great conversation tomorrow for that. Very good. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, let's move on a little bit and talk about some other things that I know you uh, want to get to this uh, morning, and that uh, one of them is enrollment. That's a question I ask uh, all of my uh, school superintendent guests at this time of year, is how enrollment numbers are looking for, for schools. And Dr. Schmidt, what are you seeing in your district this year? Yes, and so this is an important thing to the community because every child is going home to a dinner conversation, and mom and dad are asking, so how big is your class? And so we're looking very specifically at staffing ratios. Um, for the last three years, Scott, the community knows that because of budget cutbacks, class size has been doing a slow creep upward. Well, this past legislative session infused nine million new dollars into the Farmington budget. And so one of our budget promises back to the community is that we would try and reduce class size. And so we are, we are looking at the enrollment trends and the 10th day, which happens to be this Wednesday today, okay. we will be counting and that will help us determine, okay, what movement will we make if a class is big or not? And so as an example, um, the law says at, for kindergartners at 15 students to one teacher, you get a you get a teacher above 15, you get an aide, and up to 20. So we're going to try and hold classes at the kindergarten level under 20. So okay. what, what the viewers would see or the listeners would, would not see is that we have projected an enrollment for this year. Our budget was built on 10,963 kids. Okay. And so we are on the first day count was 10,048, which is... 900 below the projected, and as we get closer, day three was 10,478. Um, now, as we look at day 10, we would like to see that number go over 10,963. So we've been tracking one day, third day count, okay. five day, seven day, and now the 10 day count. Is that seven day count then 10,953? So you're within 10 students as of yes. your ten, seventh day. Is that what I'm reading yeah, correctly? Last, last Friday was our, was our seventh day. Okay. And uh, 
we felt really good right. when you get a number that is just 10 kids below what we project as our enrollment because what we find in Farmington historically is that kids trickle and clear up through Labor Day. And so once we get to that 10-day count, then we make pretty solid decisions as to do we need to add a teacher because of class size? Might we need to change in the class arrangement because a class might be too small? And so this, this is a big day for us at the end of the day. Sure. And that would put you within about, what am I looking at, five students of last year's number? Is that correct if you hit that goal of... 10,963? Yes, and again, for the listeners, that the 10-day count is really for our planning purposes for the state and their funding purposes. Then you begin to talk about the 40th, 80th, and 120th, but for our planning purposes, the 10th day is when we make the final decisions about what is that teacher-student class ratio. So big day by the end of the day. Sure. Well, I know there are a lot of other districts in the area that are seeing um, enrollment declines, and so to hold steady or to be close to what you were projecting or even close to last year is, is pretty good. Yeah, and in fact, it's a great credit to the Farmington Municipal School Systems and the quality of education that I think we continue to retain or in some cases even grow because what we've seen is in the 17-18 school year, we had 10,832. We had, when then we grew last year to 10, 958. So we've actually grown at a time when others, I think that's really something about uh, speaking to the quality of the education in the district. Right, and uh, we're showing another graph on the uh, screen for our viewers who are watching us, the actual student counts. And this is again going on day um, one through 10. Yes, I'm correct. Just, and then this is for the fun of those people who can watch it on podcast or, right. or catch it uh, as we're watching today. But just kind of a colorful illustration that our enrollment pattern is encouraging. Comparing the blue line, which we did last year, to the mm -hmm. orange line, which is this year, yes. is what we're looking at, everyone. And so, again, if you're not seeing this, you can watch it later on today on Facebook or YouTube, but we're looking at some of the actual student counts. And I know the state uses some of these counts from, what, the 40th day and the 120th day to build budgets then for the next year? Is that kind of what yes. happens? Yes, and so we will be tracking after the 10th day. We'll, we'll take a peek again at the 20th, but the 40th day is critical because that is the day if you don't meet your projected enrollment, the state begins to say, we're going to begin reducing your funding. And so it is important that we hit that 10,963, hold that through 40. Right. And then the average that the state cares about becomes that 80th day in, in uh, I want to say, late October-ish and the 120th day sometime around January. So. Got it. Big day's coming up. Another reason for you kids to stay in school. Yes. Is what we're talking about. So there, there you go. Um, assessments, let's talk a little bit about those too, Dr. Smith, this morning. And that is a bit of a transition this year, right? Because the state, um, the new governor, who said, uh, I think, that she was going to get rid of the park test. And I think one of the first things she did um, was to get rid of the park test. And so she replaced it with something else. Yes. And, uh, and then she replaced her education secretary. So um, there was a lot of replacing going on. But um, how did things go? with uh, Farmington schools with that new test? So great question. Again, the governor did come in saying that there's a new testing strategy for the future. This past, this past April, right. there, there was an annual assessment for grades three through eight and grades 11, and, and they called that the transitional assessment. It's called the TAMILA, the Transition Assessment of English Language Arts and Math. And, and what we found is our kids held steady in English language arts. And so for, for those who don't have access to the monitor, uh, the district uh, student proficiency rate is at 43%. And that's an important number to celebrate because of the 10 largest districts in the state, that is the best. And, and we will be continuing our promise to the community that we want all kids to be proficient and master their learning. But, but this is an encouraging trend. A slightly different story for math is we actually had a 3% drop across the district from 26 down to uh, 23%. So we will be looking at um, over the course of this day and tomorrow what are lessons that we can learn from that slight decline 
to get that, we were, I'm going to call it turn the curve as rapidly as we can to get that number heading up as opposed to going down. So uh, for the community, uh, English language arts, we are continuing to outperform the state, but we've got some things we can do for math. And I'm looking at the graphic that we're showing everyone, Dr. Schmidt, and even with that slight decline in your math scores, you're still ahead of the state percentage on math. Yes, and uh, for those... Uh, I understand maybe that's for, not for, good enough for, for your, your folks and, and to keep that onward upward trajectory, but uh, you're still doing better than your peers across the state, your students. Yes, I would say for these this day and tomorrow, the board will be interested in that line because that's now that's not how we want to close the achievement gap with I the understand. rest of New Mexico. Dropping down, right. We, we, we want to go up, and so we're going we're to get back on track and figure out what's going on in math. Sure. Robin Hoffman, let me bring you into this conversation about this for just a moment, about the school board's um, reaction to some of these accolades and, and numbers that your Farmington students have been getting that are leading the state in many ways with some of these test scores and proficiency numbers and, and things along that line. It's gotten the attention of, I think, at least two governors um, in the past few years to really uh, look at what Farmington is doing. Um, yes, and we, we do want to um, move that forward as well and, and increase those, of course, increase those numbers. And I think, um, I don't know that the board's necessarily um, focused on those numbers. I think the board is more focused on really what's going on in the classroom that then produces those numbers. And so if we're doing the right things in the classrooms, that those numbers will go up. Sure. Um, so that's that's really where our focus is. Understood. But certainly heading in the right direction, which everyone has to be happy with that. Right. Exactly. And um, and yes, it's important to be benchmarking ourselves against what um, the rest of the state is doing, but really looking what is the rest of the country doing, what are other um, international systems doing as well. So Which goes back to our conversation about your retreat and right. some of those topics, right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, understood. So, well, yeah. again, I think it's a great... Uh, testament to the uh, dedication of uh, the administration and the support of, of the teachers in the classroom and to see these, these results because I know it's kind of like at least I think so. Dr. Schmidt, please correct me if I'm wrong, turning a ship, right? You can't get immediate results when you're talking about student learning and instruction and curriculum and, and, and things along that. It, it does take a while, does it not, to kind of get some of these things working? Yes, and so I want to reflect on what Board Member Hoffman shared earlier and that the ship that you described, we've been on a 10-year um, crossed the ocean trip. Yeah, and, right. and so I, I, I don't see the ship turning as much as how can we make decisions to, uh, again, review and understand what's going on in the classroom, leadership of the buildings, uh, aligning our sense of purpose so that high reliability happens all across the district. Right. But at the same time, you've got other things in the ocean that are changing yes. around you, like testing and uh, and requirements and other things like that, that the ship has to kind of still travel safely through, I suppose, to yes. keep with that analogy to its very end. And so that goes back to that legislative conversational right. interest, because if uh, we locally are allowed to help chart our own path without the distractions of, is a teacher evaluation tied to test scores? You know, what what groups of kids are tested. We're not even sure, Scott, what 11th grade test is looming for us this next spring. So there, there are those little icebergs that you talk about floating that we want to make sure that we navigate around. Understood, understood. Let me ask you a bit about um, some other things that we're talking about this morning. Your memorandum of understanding with the city of Farmington, that is regarding um, school resource officers, correct? Yes, and we're pleased to share in this memorandum of understanding with the city of Farmington, we will have six school resource officers uh, and they will be scattered across the district. Um, the change in the memorandum for this year is that we will help share in the cost. And so we have uh, reached an agreement with the city of Farmington that we will provide $250,000 that partially offsets the uh, cost of school resource officers as our commitment uh, to the help ensuring the safety of our kids. And so we're very pleased that the city of Farmington will continue to provide that service. And we, we are pleased that we can participate financially in that, in that cost. 
a lot of great stories about the, the benefits of having a school resource officer or an officer in the schools and having that relationship with your, with your students, isn't there? Yes, in fact, I've been walking schools. This is now our 10th day. So I've been in the schools walking with the officers, learning, seeing what they do, listening to their stories about their purpose, which is to interact with students, uh, develop rapport with the police, so we recognize the police as our friends, and, and also an extra set of eyes that, uh, that care about our kids, because oftentimes these school resource officers have kids enrolled in the school system. They are vested and invested in the schools through their families and their tax dollars, and so it's a great way to build that connection and stay connected with the city of Farmington. Right, and so you've got six officers who will be visiting and I guess spending kind of sharing their time between numerous schools. Is that kind of how it's planned? Yes, uh, the high schools have full time. I see. Uh, other schools have shared officers and, and uh, what I appreciate is their schedules are always random and, uh, and, and but they are visible. Right, right. Well, it's good. It's a good program, I think. I think there was just a story uh, earlier this week about um, the Central Consolidated School yes. District having a memorandum of understanding with the Navajo Nation police yes. for um, resource officers for I first time I can remember on some of their schools on the reservation. So Yeah, I was very excited to see that on the news as well, that Shiprock High and Newcomb High will have uh, Navajo tribal police as part of their helping ensuring the safety of kids. So good for my neighbors at Central. Very true, very true. Um, K-5 Plus, let's talk a little bit about that program at your Apache and uh, Esperanza Elementary Schools, this pilot program, and uh, went pretty well? Yes, as part of that uh, new infusion of dollars, the state legislature also helped invest in the future of the little ones that is important to us. And so they came up with a K-5 Plus, and that is extending the school year by 25 days. And so we had two schools, Apache Elementary and Esperanza Elementary, that both recruited about 80 kids. And the rule, Scott, was that you had to have the same teacher with the same group of kids that would then, um, when all the other kids came back for their nine months of school. That, so in effect, those kids have gone to school already for a month and have been to visit talking to the kids and their principals. And they are way excited about how much have they have learned and how they are prepared for the start of this school year so much so that um, I would uh, be expecting other schools I'm looking at Bluffview, McCormick, McKinley to uh, be looking at this as a possibility next year but but um, the future Scott may be 205 days of school instead of 180. Well, your students may not be so thrilled about that. <laughs> Parents might be. I don't know. I don't. But uh, but that seems to be the trend, doesn't it? About uh, where things are where things are headed, and especially if you can see some results from that, I imagine the more the better. Yeah, I'll take you back, and perhaps Board Member Hoffman wants to talk about it. But there was a Yazzie Martinez lawsuit. That's right. Against the state of New Mexico that questioned the sufficiency of funding, or even to a degree, the purpose. And so, in response to that lawsuit. Our school is responding as one of our strategies by offering at-risk or struggling kids the opportunity for extending their school year. So we will be looking at other ways to improve the quality of education within the class time, class year, but also looking at how might we extend the day or school year for other kids across the district. Sure. And Robin Hoffman, uh, Dr. Schmidt, uh, brought you into the conversation, which is great. Um, your thoughts about uh, more days of education, of instruction for students? Um, you know, the research backs that up. And, and so, um, especially for those kids that are at risk, um, that you can make a difference in adding those 25 days um, of additional schooling. And, you know, it's interesting the families are very supportive the families are wanting that um, now whether their kids are totally on board at the beginning we're not right. probably not sure. but um, right. the their parents are mm -hmm. and so um, I think that there should be um, you know great improvement with those kids as we are looking at closing the achievement gap um, and which is what the Yazi Martinez lawsuit um, impartiality is is aimed at. Right, right. And it seems to me like the, the, that when we talk about education, that it's evolving. It's in a constant s s series of e evolution because kids are learning differently and there's all other kinds of attention grabbing distractions and, and things along that line. And so it may be different than what their parents 
went to school for 180 days or grandparents or what have you, right? It's, it's it changing. Is, education is changing rapidly, rapidly. And um, I think that we are part of strategic planning then is looking at how it is changing and trying to anticipate those changes ahead of it, at being ahead of the curve. So that is, you're exactly right when looking at, um, you know, how, how are we going to navigate that. But school has changed the what we expect from our teachers has changed um so the whole education system has been changing rapidly from even in the last few years definitely you can see that i think anyone who's paying attention right. can certainly see how that is that is happening for sure um just have a few minutes remaining this morning uh, both of you and i know dr schmidt you want to talk a bit about the uh the party with coffee that you're hosting for uh, the community that's coming up here in the next uh Gosh, next couple of weeks, right, at the uh, Focus on Farmies and uh, Coffee event. Yes, for those listeners, before the, the morning show began, Scott and I were talking, there was something happening on September 9th. And now yes. I remember what it was. It, it, is, it is a coffee, a Focus on Farmington, which is a, an event hosted by the Chamber. So good for Jamie Church and, and the Chamber friends. But right. they have uh, invited... Farmington Central Office to host that coffee. So if you're interested in seeing what the uh, first floor and fourth floor of the new district office looks like, we're going to be hosting a coffee on September 9, hours from 8 until 9. And to make that an additional celebration, Scott, it'll be a red coat ribbon cutting day. Very nice. And now, so, now, the 9th is a Monday, Dr. Schmidt, and normally these events are on Wednesdays, but is that is that correct, Donna? Are we good with the... I, I, I will go back and look at that it's again. It's probably a Wednesday. Probably a Wednesday. The 11th. So I'm thinking now it's 11th. Okay. So I'll well, go back and think of the other night. That's, that's okay. But uh, we just want folks to make sure they get there on the right day. Yeah, we'll um, post that for us on the chamber site. But there you go. Stay tuned, everybody. But we, we're pretty confident it's a Wednesday, probably September the 11th. But a, a chance to get and see the new uh, digs where Central Office is at the old um, Hillcourt building, which is the old ConocoPhillips building, which could be the old... Burlington building, depending on how long you've been in town, um, but that is an, another great shared space between Farmington Schools and, and Sam on College. I'm looking forward to seeing the college's space, but I know they're still working on it. Yes, and, and I will say the college continues to be a great partner of public education in Farmington and throughout the Four Corners, and we we do share this space. The college is on second and third floor, and and uh, the, I, I would anticipate something around maybe November so they'll be having their ribbon cutting, but, but we're anxious to show what we do on first and fourth floor because Scott it's amazing when you take six or seven locations that have been scattered all across town bring them into one building how much more efficient an operation can be for the purpose of educating our kids right and that's what you're seeing that's what we're doing I would think and doing at that building and one final thought Dr. Schmidt a date that we both know yes. is exactly right that's September 7th at Greenlawn Cemetery and that would be the Dining with the Dead uh, event that I know uh, you and I have been involved with for a while and uh, and your wife Wendy as well yes and so I do yes I, I added your picture <laughs> Um, we're, we're having but a lot you. of fun. The, yes. uh, the Kiwanis, again, there are many great partners across the town that, that uh, partner with the school. In this particular event, uh, Dining with the Dead is a Kiwanis fundraiser that raises money for coats for kids right. and clothes for kids. And so um, Scott is just a historical tradition. He's one of the icons of the event. Wendy and That's I a nice way of saying I'm old, but thank <laughs> you very much, Dr. Schmidt. <laughs> when, Wendy and I are relatively newcomers, too, but... But, uh, and I'll, I'll let you talk about the role that you play, but, but uh, Wendy and I will be playing the part of William and Clara Hunter, who built the original Dusty Attic as the a mercantile, mercantile store right. back in the early, early 1900s. And the connection to today is that uh, Tom Taylor's grandfather built the building. And so a lot of historical context in that 111 West Main Street. Definitely true. And I will be portraying um, William Wallace, who is also known as Navajo Bill, who uh, made a lot of overtures to the Native Americans, and especially the Navajo, and, and began some of the Navajo trading in the area, and certainly was kind of seen as, a, as an intermediary between some of the Anglo settlers and the Native Americans that were, that were here back at the turn of the century. And so uh, it's always a great event. I know it's sold out. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you've been a part of this for a long time. And again, there is a school 
connection too because this Friday is actually yes. our dress rehearsal and that's when we get to uh, practice our uh, lines in front of some of your students from nearby McKinley Elementary and, School. And, and Mesa Verde for the this first year. time. Yes. yes, and so we'll see about 300 kids that will be... I call it, we call it living history, right? Because sure. there's about uh, you know, I'm going to say 12 or more reenactments of real people who played such an important part in growing the city of Farmington to what it is today. So we're we're happy and excited to share that in front of our kids. Very true. And I always like when they uh, try to figure out if my mustache is real or not. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite parts of this. So well, when when what I find is when you later on go back and visit the classroom somebody will shout hey there's the dead guy there he is that's <laughs> right that's very true well thank you both for coming in this morning robin hoffman i appreciate your insights here as a member of the school board and good luck at the retreat today and tomorrow thank you very much you bet it's great to have you here dr schmidt always a pleasure of course thank you, scott see you next month thanks for your uh here every we appreciate that very much so thank you all very much my guest from farmington schools this morning here on ksje and i'll be back with more in just a moment did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.